Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News Weekend Edition. Good evening, I'm Keaton Hall. We've seen spotty downpours today, but the threat for severe weather looms as we head into the evening hours tomorrow. First Alert meteorologist Evan Hatter joins us as our First Alert weather day coverage continues. Evan. Uh, that's right, Keaton. Uh, that's right. We haven't seen a ton as we went through the day today. However, the uh, big time threat is as we head towards tomorrow evening and into tomorrow night. That's when our First Alert weather day takes effect throughout the region. Overall, we're looking at the potential for damaging winds, heavy rain, large hail, and even the possibility for an isolated tornado or two. That's why we encourage you to download that First Alert weather app. You'll get the very latest right on your phone right as we continue to see uh, the potential tomorrow evening. It's a level three enhanced risk for areas basically West Liberty to Jackson to Barberville and points off to the west. And this continues during the day tomorrow. Everybody else in level two slight risk. Tornado threat greatest in that orange area. It's not off the charts, but it's a typical for a June event. Large hail, the best potential out west. High winds, everybody's got that threat of winds to 60 to 70 miles per hour. And some localized flooding can't be ruled out, but by no means the main threat. We had our Medical Center camera. It's actually been a pretty nice day. Plenty of sunshine, middle and upper 80s as we head into portions of the Big Sandy, into the upper 70s in the Kentucky River Valley, and back into the mid 80s already as we head into parts of the Lake Cumberland area. A couple of showers moving toward places like Moorhead and Harlan over the next little bit, but a lot of this will continue to move on out. There you see a couple in the Big Sandy. Your forecast first through the next 12 hours. Clear tonight with a little bit of that patchy fog as we fall into the mid 60s. Keaton, I'll have the details on when those storms really really start to move in in a few minutes. All right, thank you, Evan. Today marks the one year anniversary of the U.S. Supreme Court decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. Since the ruling, 14 states have banned or severely restricted abortion, mostly in the South. Opponents and supporters of abortion rights are rallying across the country this weekend as President Joe Biden calls on Congress to restore the right to abortion nationwide. Shelley Malashi has the latest. Activists protest after the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade one year ago, striking down the constitutional right to an abortion across the nation. The Opponents of abortion celebrated the move, and more than a dozen states, mainly in the South, have banned or severely restricted the procedure since the ruling. Freedom! Rallies happening Freedom! across the nation today. Freedom! The issue galvanized voters during the 2022 midterms, Democrats plan to make abortion rights a central campaign issue in the 2024 presidential election. On Saturday, Vice President Kamala Harris stopped in Charlotte, North Carolina to mark the anniversary with a powerful speech. The women of our nation have suffered under the consequences of these laws, laws that in design and effect have created chaos, confusion and fear. She and President Joe Biden met with key reproductive rights groups on Friday. The president signed an executive order and called on Congress to codify Roe versus Wade. Court got Roe right 50 years ago, and I believe Congress should restore the protections of Roe v. Wade once and for all. Around the country. On Saturday, Republican presidential candidate Mike Pence joined opponents of abortion to celebrate the anniversary of the court's decision at the Lincoln Memorial. We've not come to the end of this cause. We've come to the end of the beginning. And the work for life goes on. I'm Shelley Malashi reporting. President Joe Biden's executive order directs the secretaries of the Treasury, Labor and Health and Human Services to consider guidance guaranteeing that private health insurance under the Affordable Care Act covers all FDA approved methods of contraception. Current guidance only mandates coverage for one contraceptive product per FDA category. Well, June is Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month, and folks in Pikeville are gathering to support the cause. Forget Me Not is currently being held at the Pikeville City Park to raise awareness and support the Alzheimer's Association. Event organizers say this event is a time for families to come together and have some fun with live music, food, and much more but also a time to learn about a disease that affects families across the globe, including here in Appalachia. If there's anything that I can do to help, you know, find a cure, 
I don't want my kids to see me the way I had to see my granny. And you know, this disease has run in our family. Like uh, my great grandmother also had it. So it's scary to think about that one day it could be me or one of my cousins having it. And I wanna try to do something to stop it. Live music and more in the park will continue until 9 p.m. and then candles will be lit to remember those who've been affected by the disease. We'll have more from the event tonight at 11. More than 100 girls with intellectual disabilities and special needs from all over Kentucky gathered at Pulaski County High School for the fifth annual Miss Abilities pageant. The pageant was started in 2017 with only 43 girls signing up. Six years later, the pageant has 129 signed up. Co-founder Blake Roberts says this event is a great way to give ladies with intellectual disabilities a pageant of their own. It's just uh, overall like it is the most like joyful, heartwarming event that I feel like we could possibly give these girls. Robert says this day would not have been possible without the support and donations from the community. We'll have more on the growth of the pageant tonight at 11. A senior at Floyd Central is teaming up with the Floyd County Sheriff's Department to try and make a difference in his community. Todd Prater created Operation Drago's Comfort, named after K-9 officer Drago, who died last year along with three officers in Allen, Kentucky. The goal is to provide officers in the department with a teddy bear they can give to children who they encounter during their duties. To raise money, Todd baked homemade dog treats and sold nearly 1,100 of them. His student technology leadership program teammate Brianna Anderson helped him design and apply the logo for his project. Todd was able to buy 124 teddy bears. Trail runners from across the state are in Perry County for a weekend racing event. WYMT's Chandler Wilcox details what makes this trailway race so unique. Trail runners and hikers from many different places gathered at Perry County Park where a trail system has become a community staple. Yeah, these trails are like, I, I'd sometimes describe them as a living thing to people because they're constantly in motion, constantly changing, improving. The route takes runners through the scenic trails. So even though there's a lot of like 5K or more traditional races in our region and state, um, this race is just really unique because the format is just so unlike anything else. There is something else making the race unique. <laughs> Named Kiss the Goat, racers interact with the animals during and after the hike. There's a trail out there that you use called Benny Goat, and like so goat got trickled in that way, and I was like, what if you, you know, kiss the goat? And then it was like, well, we can definitely get goats there, and I was like, all right, it's going to be kiss the goat then. Between the goats and mountainous scenery, Josh Patton says the event keeps runners on their toes. It's just a completely different, uh, you know, surrounding. Like, you know, a road is pretty similar every, every step of the way. Um, and trail is different, you know, you gotta be on your toes in a literal sense of, uh, sense of it all. And Whether they won or lost may not be what runners remember, but rather the goats at the event with them. In Perry County, Chandler Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. And although he didn't race, WYMT's Chandler Wilcox went out of his comfort zone, you could say. He found a way to participate in the festivities. There he is kissing the goat. The Bluegrass Mountain Cup, a mountain bike race, will also be at the Perry County Park beginning at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Summer in the Park is underway at Bobby Davis Park here in Hazard. Vendors are lined up with art and food as park staff look to make the event a fun place for kids to get involved. Visual Arts Coordinator Kelly Sizemore says this is the perfect opportunity for kids in the area to show off their talents. It's uh, geared towards a uh showing the kids, uh, exposing them to arts and culture and things like that. Um, it's a good place to get out, maybe have your first uh, go at going to an art show. The Little Theater of Hazard will be presenting a play called Hoka Poka tonight. That one's at 7 p.m. in the park. The Amateur Radio Society in Bullock County took part in the biggest emergency communications exercise on the planet today. The group took part in Amateur Radio Field Day. The goal is to exchange basic information with as many stations as possible over 24 hours. Operators in Bullock County said there will probably be 30,000 people on ham radios in North America alone. There will also probably be a few from Australia, Europe, and Japan. And while for most it's a hobby, it's something that can really help if other communication methods fail. So in the case of an emergency, which is really kind of what the purpose of amateur radio is, 
uh, we can come in and provide a, a level of communication when everything else doesn't work. And by noon, we have three operational stations that we can communicate globally if need be. They started broadcasting at about 2 p.m. earlier today. Similar events are being held across the mountains, including in Whitesburg and Harlan County. The Kentucky National Guard is celebrating its 231st anniversary. In 1792, Governor Isaac Shelby established the National Guard 19 days after the Commonwealth became the 15th state of the Union. It's made up of the Kentucky Army National Guard and the Kentucky Air National Guard. The organization has responded during times of local crisis and natural disasters, including the July floods, and served along active duty U.S. military members. Most soldiers and airmen of the Kentucky National Guard have selflessly served their state and nation, often at great personal risk. So recognizing their dedication and bravery is an essential uh, you know, aspect of commemorating this type of milestone. The Kentucky National Guard is always recruiting. Anyone who's willing and ready to answer the Commonwealth's call for help is welcome to join. Coming up at 6, a track event is held in honor of the daughter of an Olympian who was killed by gun violence seven years ago. And continuing to watch that potential for strong storms as we head into tomorrow night, I'm tracking the latest ahead.